Okay. No, no, no. ตะกันตะรุ่นแต่เป็ดเอาเบอร์โดนเลยอ่ะตรงไปยกพวกมันโอ้ใส่ตรงนี้เจ้าโอเคเดี๋ยวเจ้าไปจะพูดอยู่เ
Okay, who will be our MC here? Who will be hosting here? Testing, testing everyone. Okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Good, thank you. Okay, just wanted to know who's leading this um, uh, candle vigil. <laughs> started shortly i just want to thank everyone wow look at this everyone just pitching in helping people brought candles helping set up the vigil we really appreciate that because this is what community looks like that's right standing together um, so everyone with the camera in place you ready to roll yeah they win you ready um, they're asking if everyone can move in. Oh, come on, come on. There are some signs up here. Some of you have posters. We have some maids. We can actually have uh, some more maids. So, yeah. Yeah. So first of all, I want to open up by thanking everyone for just coming out and standing up against police tyranny and calling out the injustice which took place here by the St. Paul Police Department. I'm Monique Colors Doty. I am the co-founder of Black Lives Matter Minnesota and Black Lives Matter Twin Cities Metro. Let's go! I'm also the aunt of Marcus Golden who was killed by St. Paul Police. So I speak from experience and we all stand in solidarity with this family. Um, it's horrific what has happened once again in the city of St. Paul. And we are here, we're gonna continue to organize and fight because we do demand justice. And so we are offering, extending all of our resources, Communities United Against Police Brutality, Family Supporting Family Against Police Violence, Black Lives Matter St. Paul, Black Lives Matter Twin Cities Metro, Racial Justice, Racial Justice Network, um, Justice Care for Jamar, Care Minnesota. All of those of us who really do the work, who get out and organize, we're here 
not just in solidarity, but as your family. We're here to show you love, and we are here with you in this battle. We are so um, proud of what happened earlier today with that protest and showing up at the police department. So give yourselves a hand if you were there, the Trey Hearn and Tashira who helped organize that with the Hmong community. This is just heartbreaking and it's happened too many times. So we're gonna make sure that we continue to fight. I wanna thank the independent media and our commercial media for giving attention and shining a light on what happened. We saw what happened. And we saw that it was wrong, that it was unjustified, that it was uncalled for. And it is the continued aggression of the St. Paul Police Department that continues to have people of color killed needlessly. They shoot first and ask questions later. That's all they know how to do is kill people. Listen! That's right. So right now I'm going to turn it over to Michelle Gross, the founder of... Um, oh my God, I'm forgetting everything. I'm so sorry. Communities United Against Police Brutality. Um, let's give Michelle a hand. Uh, thank you so much for being here, and I'm so proud to stand with you today. I'm so distressed about what happened in this building. It's There's no excuse or reason for what happened. It's outrageous because, you know, police, is, as Monique says, shoot first and, and ask questions later. And one of the things that they try to do is they try to control the narrative. And they do that by withholding all of the information to themselves so they can kind of spin a story. And then they know that the news cycle is short. So they will tell their story. And then they know that nobody will find out what really happened because by the time that comes out, it's months and months ahead. So we actually did not want to let that happen. So we sued the St. Paul police to force them to release the name of the gentleman, uh, Vie Zhang, and we also forced them to release the names of the cops. And then we sued them to force them to release the body camera footage because we are entitled to all of that data under the Data Practices Act, but they violate the law in every one of these police killings because they want to set up a narrative to justify what they've done. And I've looked at that body camera footage and I want to see the body camera footage. Well, it's on the news, and that's the lucky part. So people can see it, because what they always try to do is keep this stuff secret. They have kept secret body camera footage for killings that happened a year or more ago. We still have not seen that footage. So this was really rapid for them to release this. And what it showed me is that what we know is this. If there's an edge weapon involved, a knife, the defense against an edge weapon is distance and barriers. The door was a barrier. Yes. They eliminated that, that, that defense. The distance was a barrier. They ran up on him, a man who had uh, great loss of hearing and didn't speak their language. They ran up on him, closed the distance and removed the barrier. They set themselves up to be in peril and then benefited from that by shooting him and killing him. This was unjustified, in my opinion. I do not believe this thing was justified, and I'm saying that as somebody who has looked at hundreds of, of videos of this kind of stuff. I, I'm totally appalled by it. I think it never needed to happen. It's disgusting that it did, and they thought they were just gonna keep everything, you know, not tell his name, ta not tell the names of the cops involved. They were gonna keep everything under wraps, and we were just gonna go along with it and be, par be okay with it, and we're not okay with it. Are we? No, we're not. No. We are not okay with this. No. We are demanding justice. And that what does that justice look like to y'all? Fire the cops and prosecute the cops, right? We cannot bring this man back. But we must ensure that those cops that engage in this dangerous conduct of putting themselves in peril and then using that as the justification for murdering this man, that they do not get to go free. We cannot let that happen. You know, having one or two or four cops even in this state get prosecuted for murdering people, nowhere near enough. We have to have the cops that engage in this conduct get prosecuted, have a consequence for their conduct, and until they do, we will continue to see more of these kinds of incidents. So it's very important that we press for the prosecution of these officers. These guys are just on a paid vacation right now. Is that acceptable? No. It's not. These guys should be sitting in a jail cell. Yeah. They don't need to be on a paid vacation, paid by the taxpayers. 
They need to be in a jail cell waiting to be prosecuted for what they did. You know, one of the things I want you to think about, one of the cops, he had a taser. So, you know, we know tasers can be deadly, but he had a taser, but they're not generally considered deadly weapons. Guns are. If one cop thought a taser was okay, why did the other cop think a gun was necessary? Think about that for a second too. So a lot of this case stinks. A lot of this case looks very unjustified from anybody that looks at this objectively. It looks very unju unjustified. Um, it's a good thing that that body camera footage came out. It wouldn't have, but for a lawsuit. And I'm so glad we did that lawsuit to force them to release what is public data to us so they could only spin their narrative for a short period of time. And now we know the real truth. And I think that's damned important. Do you all agree? Yes. Yeah. So that's why we're out here, you know, because anytime a community member loses their lives to the police, it's utterly tragic. But in a situation like this with a 65 year old man who couldn't hear and didn't speak the language and they go in and create a sense of peril, create the danger and then use that danger that they created to justify. That's so wrong. And that's what happened in this case. And that's why we're demanding justice. And that's why we're demanding arrest these two damn cops. That video is probable cause to arrest them right now. It was probable cause to arrest them last Saturday, and it's definitely probable cause to arrest them right now. Put their asses in the jail and keep them there until they have a trial. Yeah. Yeah. Justice for you, yeah. Justice for you, Sean. Yeah. Today we've been saying this. I know I've been out here for eight years. We've been saying. Yeah, she worked on Fawn Lee's case. We've been saying this for a long time in solidarity. So we have always acknowledged other people of color and white people, anyone who's killed wrongfully by the police. We are there to support in solidarity. One love. Uh, next we have Tashir Gary Allen, family supporting family against police brutality. Oh, you got your own mic. That's who gave it to me. Woo. <laughs> Well, as I said before at the last uh, rally that we was at, is that um, an injustice done to one of us is an injustice done to all of us. And we have to, is any, um, okay, an injustice done to one of us is an injustice done to all of us. could have been any one of us. It could have been any one of us. And we have to believe in our hearts that an injustice done to one of us is an injustice done to all of us. That is the start. And once we believe that in our hearts, then we have to move as if an injustice done to one of us as human beings is an injustice done to all of us. What about George Floyd? George Floyd, everybody, everybody, every human being that has lost their life unjustly at the hands of this corrupted system. We have white men that go and shoot up churches and all kinds of things and they walk out alive. But we consistently have poor white people. We consistently have uh, black people, Hmong people, Hispanic people, that uh, native people that don't make it out of these situations alive. And that should tell us something. We have families here that have lost loved ones at the hands of the police that is here to support this family and here to support the Hmong community for us, it doesn't matter what his nationality was. It doesn't matter what he looked like. It matters that he was a human being and he didn't deserve to die like that. It matters that he was a human being that deserved a chance. They could have resolved that situation if they would have just let him close the door. He would have put the knife down. But they didn't give him a chance. 
to do anything. They kicked the door, like Michelle said, and eliminated that barrier. And they created that situation and then murdered him. And now they're trying to justify it. It's, it was an unjustified murder. But what I want to say to all of the community, this has to be consistent. We have to build a momentum. We have to build a partnership and standing up for what we know in our hearts is right. So if they kill a black person, the Hmong community, the black community, the native community, the Hispanic community is going to show up. If they kill a Hmong person, the black community, the Hmong community, the native community, and all the communities are going to show up when there is a human life that is stolen unjustly for any reason at all, we must all show up. We must show up in large numbers to let them know that we're not playing, that we're not going to stand for this, that we're not going to be quiet, and we don't care what they look like. We don't care about any of that. We care about human life, and if you take one of them, we're all going to show up. So I give my condolences to the family and the Hmong community. I stand with you. Our whole movement stand with you. We got your back, but we need you guys to have our back and we're gonna have each other back through this. We're gonna create a momentum. We're gonna continuously show up. Please look at Black Lives Matter Minnesota page, Black Lives Matter Twin Cities Metro, Communities United Against Police Brutality, Family Supporting Families Against Police Violence, TCC for J pages, because we're always creating events whenever this happens. Follow those pages so you can show up in solidarity, because we're going to show up in solidarity, because what happened to Mr. Yeo was absolutely wrong. He was a senior citizen in our community. He didn't deserve that. And we got you guys' back. Let's have each other back. Say his name. Yes, 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for being here and standing in solidarity. We have other families that uh, have stood in solidarity. We also have a support group that um, the family can join. So if anybody can help them learn about it, please do. Thank you. Uh, we have Toussaint Morrison with Onsite Public Media. Doing great work, Toussaint. Can you come up? I saw you in the crowd. Lisa! Matter. Hmong lives matter. Hmong lives matter. Hmong lives matter. Hmong lives matter. Thank you, Toussaint. Hi. Everyone over you in. Check out the lyrics. I'm Toussaint Morrison. Um, I want you to remember this name. His name is uh, David Emery Linthicum. <laughs> He was a white man who had resisted arrest. He had shot two police officers and he was apprehended alive. He wasn't tased and he wasn't assaulted in any way. It's incumbent upon these police officers to take people in alive, maybe in trouble, maybe in treatment, but definitely alive. And the way that Yeah was treated was less than human. Yes. The way that Yia was treated was expendable. It's a game. And the way that Yia was treated was, it, it needs to be prosecuted. These, these cops need to be brought to justice. These cops need to be prosecuted. They need to be arrested. And the standard in the bar is so low to become a police officer that these two could show up and accost a man like Yia and not speak to him in a language that he understood or address him in a way as a human being and too often we are treated as less than human beings and for Yi Zhang to be treated the way he was treated is, is absolutely abominable and they need to be prosecuted look no further than the people around you I went to high school with somebody that became a St. Paul police officer and with the, with the work Shell Gross does and with the work that Monique does Less than a month looking up officers who had shot and killed people, I found his name, an old high school classmate of mine, who had shot and killed a dog with Matt Severance on a no-knock warrant. All of these police officers have dirt on their hands. And everybody in this community deserves to have police officers or deserves to have 
some to, deserves to be treated like a human being. We shouldn't be out here. This shouldn't continue to happen. When Dalal Eid was murdered by the police, we showed up even before we knew his name, ethnicity, or what had happened. This city is on notice. Whether it's Hmong, Vietnamese, black, white, Latino, it doesn't matter. We show up because we are holding these people accountable and you deserve to have law enforcement that is held accountable at the bare minimum. That is a bare minimum. If anybody killed somebody on the job, they wouldn't have that job anymore. How many killer cops are on the payroll in St. Paul? How many killer cops are on the payroll in Minneapolis? The standard is so egregiously low that these people are showing up and treating people like Ye Zhong as expendable. Ye Zhong was a human. Ye Zhong was valuable. He was loved. And maybe in trouble or maybe in treatment, he should be alive. Yes. Yes. Say his name. Yes. Say his name. Yes. Say his name. Yes, Say his name. Yes, and I'll wrap up with this. I went to Wyndham Open Middle School, and we knew how it was because some of my Hmong and Vietnamese brothers would show up to school, and they treated all of us the same. We sat at the same lunch table, and we had white kids looking at us funny. So I show up with, with you as, as family because I've been in that struggle as well, being looked at funny, being treated less than human, wondering why we're in the principal's office for no damn reason and treated as criminals before we even open our mouths. That's right. And I saw many of my classmates, classmates be treated as less than human because they didn't speak English. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of folks out there that speak three languages. And some of these cops can barely speak one. So them pulling up and treating him as less than human is absolutely unacceptable. And we have to keep showing up and keep repeating his name so people understand, remember, and understand that he was a human being that deserved to be treated like one. Thank you. No sleep, okay. Twin Cities Coalition Justice for Jamar. I'm a founding member, I should know the name. I had no sleep. Lyndon, you want to come on up? Thank you so much. And then, uh, if there are any, right? Oh, absolutely. So, we're just not knocking out some of the organizers that are here and organizations in solidarity. And then we'll have some community. And if there's some family members that are here, we want we want it to hear from you. We want to hear from the Hmong community. And, um, we're just here to support you, so we're going to just turn the platform form over and let's hear from you. But now we hear, Linda, give her a hand. Twin Cities Coalition for Justice for Jamar. Hello, everyone. My name is Linda. I'm with the Twin Cities Coalition for Justice for Jamar Clark. Jamar Clark was murdered by Minneapolis police in 2015. And that was a spark that ignited the Twin Cities in protest that has never been seen in, the, in decades before then. So um, we want to carry on that proud legacy and protest the murder of Ye Zhang, the protest of Jamar, the protest of hundreds of others around this state who have been killed in the last 10, 10 20 years. Um, you know, I, I often don't like to even watch those terrible uh, videos of people being murdered, but it was just, when I think of what the Hmong community has been through before they came to Minnesota and after they came to Minnesota, Minnesota, and how they were betrayed by the government, even though they fought a war for the U.S., but were treated very poorly when they got here. Just to see that treatment of Ye Zhang on that film was just horrible and devastating. And those police officers and should be should be fired. They should be prosecuted. They should be in jail right now. Yeah. And um, our, uh, my heart goes out to the community for all they have all they have struggled for, all they have fought for, and um, Twin Cities Coalition for Justice for Jamar will be here for you now, and we will be here for everyone who is unjustly murdered by the police. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much. It's absolutely right. Solidarity and love. Next, we're going to hear from Taryn Vang, who, um, whose boyfriend was Travis Jordan, who was killed by Minneapolis police. And Taryn's been coming out just doing work and supporting the movement um, ever since. So, Taryn, thank you for coming out. Hello, my name is Taryn Vang. Uh, my boyfriend, Travis Jordan, was murdered November 9, 2018, by the Minneapolis Police Department um, during a mental health crisis. It's nearly identical to what happened to Ye Zhang. He was in his house. He was There was a barrier between him and the cops, and they kept taunting him to come out, come out. He came out with a knife, wanting to only harm himself because it was during he was having a mental health crisis. Um, they could have left him alone. He was fine and safe in his house. Uh, instead, they kept taunting him to come out, and when he did, uh, they shot and killed him. Um, this is really messed up, and I'm so glad that there is so much of the Hmong community being here for Ye Zhang. Um, I just really hope that you will all be here for all stolen lives that are um, taken from us, and not just um, for Hmong people. We want it all to be also in solidarity with like Hmong and Black Lives and everyone else to just be there for each other, because this happens to everyone, you know. Um, so, you know, I just want the family to know that, you know, I am here for you. I am here to support you in any way I can. Um, just let me know. Uh, I was going through the CUAPB website today of the Stolen Lives list, and, you, you know, there are so many Hmong people on that list, and I just want us to take this time to really um, just honor all the stolen lives. So I wrote down a few names um, that I could find. So uh, can we say justice for Nzua Vang? Justice for Shua Vang. Justice for Yi Vang. Justice for Chu Zhang. Justice for Pumi Lee. Justice for Ki Yang. Justice for Map Kong. Justice for Cheshire Fong Vu. Justice for Jason Yang. Justice for Fong Lee. Justice for Basi Lor. Justice for Tia Yang. You know, it. I just hope that everyone realizes that it's not just black lives are being killed, Asian lives are being killed, like we all just need to stand in solidarity with each other and you know, I hope that this all you know, just puts us in the right path to like being there for each other because in numbers, you know, we there's just so much support and, and we can really get things done. So, thank you. All lives matter. Mom 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 lives matter. This is Snowden. He's gonna. He's a representative from the Hmong community. He's gonna be speaking, and then here we. Uh, let's move over. Is the rest of the family wanting to come up? We have the family here. Yes. Can you say your last name? Snowden. H E R R. I'm going to speak more first. What are the Yakaki Tisha, Tosia, Mona, Pesha, Total, Totte, Hotelina, Tia, the Tiama, Nana, Nate, Yatama, Tetama, Pena, Pepper, Pesha, the Shima, Petua, Nama, Vienna, more time, man. We had the Jatana Tina, Tora Petu, Guti, Yia, Shona, Totashi Neng, Rota Hachana, Lu, Apamena. Yelly Peter Tot, Teratoton, and Narshalotor, Sun and Toki Lu, Kinjaki Tua, Tesaki Chinjanjang, Wa, Yatam Luna, Tau, Water Petro Mong. Yelly the Petona Chiala, Water Yasu, Lake Water Mong, a Yelly Da, Peter or Jo to Jar, and Gutina Jar. Well, 
this is my Tong Xiong, the daughter of uh, the older daughter of Ye Xiong. This is Xi Xiong, Mrs. Ye Xiong, who is now the widow. This is Ye Xiong, this is Ye Xiong, younger sister, who coming from uh, Michigan. This is the Ye Xiong's older uh, sister who coming from Milwaukee. Yeah, Lisa Xiong, you have to take the time. Yeah, Lisa Xiong, you have to take the time. Uh, Yami Li, who is the uh, middle sister of Ye Xiong? Yami Li, who is the middle sister of Ye Xiong? Yami Li, who is the middle sister of Ye Xiong? ที่เตี้ยมันกูจึงเต้าตาสินังตาสินมาตามรั่วเจริญตัวจีชายรองจีชัวรองเจริญตัวสอบพอตัวเป็ดตัวกึ่ยเยี่ยงชงนาตุเ
agencies or organizations that organize make tonight possible for all of us because the life the lost life of by the police and not only one person but many people but for tonight specifically for Ye Xiong who got killed unjustified unjust unjustly and he was just uh, he did not speak English he has a hard of hearing and he did did not understand what the police uh, comment on him and there was no his language spoken at that time and he did not know what to do so he got killed very instantly and we are here to remember and so especially on behalf of all the, you know, the communities of the home community we would like to appreciate thank you for all your help and your efforts making this possible and this is not the end we are going to uh, we are going to rally more into the futures and we need all of you to come back and bring your friends and your relatives back to help us and help you help our organizations fight for justice for all all right and so justice what do we want justice. when now for whom yes. okay now i would like to chant a little bit because uh the fact that he did not speak english okay no english no English. When I say no English, you say no shooting, okay? <laughs> no English. No English. No English. Don't shoot. All right, let's change. So, no justice. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. All right, thank you very much. And uh, you know, God bless you. All right, and we appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. Okay, I wanted to thank each and every one of you guys from the bottom of my heart for all the things that you guys do, all the community, each and every one of them, each and every one of you guys. My family cannot thank you guys enough. So I just want to say thank you, and we appreciate everything. We got your back. 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 We Thank you for, for coming out. I know this is a horrific time. It's a nightmare on St. Paul Street. And so thank you, and we will continue. We have uh, connected with some, some family members. We'll continue to uh, show support. And actually, I saved a couple more of those for you, so they're in my car, so for the family, if that might be coming out. So, thank you so much. This is this is very difficult, right? To stand next to this this truck. So hello, and, and so much pain. So I can we just give them a hand for coming out and for standing up, not taking this lying down. That's where the fight really begins. So I hope that we can give them energy and can carry can carry them all the way through to the end, getting these officers prosecuted. So we just have all the love in the world for you, and we grieve with you, and we'll continue to stand with you. And we do have another organizer that's here that we'd like to hear from. It's Tom Mosley, Taking the Nation. He's traveled across the country taking a knee for stolen lives, and he has tattoos of, I don't know how many people who have been killed by the police. He tattoos their, their name. That's how much he's serious about it. 
So let's give Tom Mosley a hand. Yeah, so this, um, this, this murder, it's, uh, you know, another glaring example that this could happen to any one of us. You know, I've been um, involved with this for a long time, since like 2018. I've closely examined hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases of police killings, all different races. Like Monique was saying, I have nine names of stolen lives tattooed on my body so far. I'm, uh, you know, starting to fill up. I'm going to run out of space. My tattoo artist is even saying, the police got to stop killing out, killing people. You're going to run out of space, man. And, um, man, it's just, um, you know, it's been great to, um, you know, work with Monique all these years. It's, um, you know, she really means it when she says we show up for everybody. And this is, a, you know, obviously a club nobody wants to be a part of. But, um, you know, we're serious when we say, you know, we're here for you guys. And we don't just got your back, we are your back. And, uh, man, just prosecuting these cops is just, oh man, that's just got to be the start. Because we see time and time again, these cops get these bullshit two, three year sentences. And that's nothing. I mean, yeah, or nothing at all. There's been countless acquittals, drop charges, mistrials. Just since the year 2000, according to the database that we have, there have been over 30,000 people killed by the police in this country since 2000. That's around four people every single day. There have been, what, maybe a little over 100 cops charged, 30 or 40 convicted. That's a fraction of a percent of a conviction rate for murders. But then civilians do, you know, they don't even have to kill somebody to be killed by the police you know, get a life sentence, all this other shit, it's just... Uh, but, um, yeah, anyways, like I said, to, to Ia's family, we don't just got your back, we are your back, we're here forever, and um, every time you hear me say ACAP, I'm, I'm saying all cops are bitches, that means every single one. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, and just, uh, I don't know if uh, Karen 11, Alpha News, Fox 9 are still here, but, um, you know, this shit can't be reformed. Abolition's the only answer. You can go back to your editors and tell them Tom Mosley said that. Thank you, Tom. I also see the family, uh, the parents of Tecle, Sunberg. I did see them. Are you still? Oh, you're directly back. Would you like to say something? You're good. You're good. You know, last time she spoke at the Capitol, she was just on fire, so... Thank you all. Thank you. Oh, we're just gonna, okay. Thank you for coming up. Um, uh, Tech Lake Sunburn, so near and dear to my heart. Um, killed by Minneapolis police. So um, this is his mother. I first want to say to the family, I am so, so sorry. I know the journey you're about to embark on and the lies and the things that the police will say about you and about him. And please know there are people out there who don't believe that and know what a good human he was that sees his humanity and knows that this was not okay. Over and over and over again, white people get to have mental health crises. They get to shoot cops. They get to do really horrendous things and they get arrested alive. It has to stop. The system is beyond broken. The racism is so embedded. Is there white Minnesota, step up, say no, do your job, come out, hey, stand with your brothers and sisters. We are all human and we all deserve the same treatments by the system. My son didn't get it. People who've done worse things than him came out alive. And again, I'm so sorry to the family. Thank you so much. Give her a hand. So, you know, it can be difficult to get her and talk about it. And her son, her son was black. So, um, I want to point out that St. Paul has a new police chief. So this is really telling 
of what we're going to see in the future if he does not have these officers fired and prosecuted. And the problem is that we have a St. Paul police chief who came from the St. Paul police. All the, of all the candidates, the people from out of town, other states, someone was chosen who knows all the secrets, who the other officers have secrets on him, and so we know that we're not going to have a real significant change. But the fact that we did see one camera released, okay, that, that's something. But we need more. So we need to demand more of our new chief. It's, we should talk about doing is organizing a call-in and just calling and tying up the phones all day, demanding justice, demanding these officers are prosecuted because we have to put pressure on him. And if he's not going to do the right thing, then he needs to move on to another place. And the mayor needs to find a new chief of police for St. Paul. We cannot allow him to remain in position. So we need to go after his job as well, if he's going to keep killer cops. And that also includes the killer cops that are still unemployed who killed multiple people. You have officers who've killed, been involved in two and three killings within the St. Paul Police Department. So it is truly a horrific situation. Um, so I have an ask for the community. If we can keep this visual up and going and growing, I think that would be so beneficial for the families to know. So if you come by and bring some balloons, bring some candles, bring some flowers, you know, and I'll do my part too and keep bringing stuff. We want to make sure we keep it going. We want to keep it going until he gets justice, right? So we're going to try and keep those candles burning. We'll bring some battery lit candles and, and see how we can keep it going. I mean, we have a snowstorm coming, so I anticipate it's kind of going to get destroyed. So when that passes, we got to come out and, and rebuild it. But let's keep it going and let's show that as a symbol of love to the family who's still here to show that, hey, we still care. Let's keep coming out. Let's keep it growing. And we can move to different trees, have multiple trees. So I think that's almost the least that we can do to show tangibly, in a tangible way, that we still care and that we love one another here. Um, so we have some, it's time we want to make sure that we're, we're allowing the Hmong community to really speak. Um, would you like to speak? Uh, James Lowe. Um, I am a community member. I live here in St. Paul for 30 years. And here's what I want to say. I don't know about you all right now, but my feet are cold, my hands are cold, we are cold. But I want to say this, we are not as cold as SPPD, right? What they did was cold. So what I'm trying to say here is this, this is unjust, this is not fair. Mr. Ye Shong should be here with us today. We should be celebrating his birthday, his anniversary, the good things that he has done. He's a war veteran. He has served this country. He put his blood on the line to make sure that we have freedom. And today, St. Paul Police, this is what he did to an elderly who is hard of hearing, who doesn't know English. This is unacceptable. St. Paul Police has to do better. Yes. And we demand better. We demand justice. That's right. And I am just so hurt when I was talking to Mrs. Yeo and the family. Our condolences are with the family. But here's the thing. But all of you guys show up today, what I see is people, residents of all races here. Mo, white, black, Latino, all of us are here. And I want to say thank you on behalf of our Mo community. This means a lot that you have our back, that one life is too many taken away by the police department. One life is too many. Ready? One life. You say too many. One life. Too many. One life. Too many. And here's the thing. We demand justice, okay? So let's continue the momentum. Let's continue the, um, the, the movement here. Let's continue to fight. I'm going to close it up. With uh, Snowdon said, no English, don't shoot. Alright, ready? No English! Don't shoot! No English! Don't shoot!
One more here with no justice, no peace. Last one. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a hand. Thank you so much. He also helped set up these here early. So thank you again, everyone who helped us set up. Would you, uh, let's do another chant. How about we started with the no justice? How about no justice, no peace? Prosecute the police, right? Do what we want. Right. No justice. No, no peace. peace. Prosecute the police. No justice. No peace. Prosecute the police. No justice. No peace. Prosecute the police. No justice. No peace. Prosecute the police. Thank you. So I used to be a choir director, so everyone's not all together. I'm like, okay, no justice, no peace. Prosecute file, file like I'm directing. <laughs> Thank you. We got we got to raise our voices. We want him to hear from the heavens that we're out here calling up his calling out his name. Um, would you like to say something? You've been up here. Yes. Hi everyone. Uh, this is Cool Yang. I'm a Kansas citizen, and uh, I see the video and. This is no car duty, okay? This is a person life. When someone shoot in a car duty, you get one life, you get another life, you put at the corner and then you can play another game. I want to make sure the Singapore police know that this is not car duty. It's not a game. Right. This is not a game. Right. One year, when they murder a year, he's not coming back. There's no restart. I want to make sure that all the kids out there know that murder is wrong, killing is wrong. Yep. So we are here seeking justice for a year. And we will not stop until justice be served. So let's change. Because right now, yes, he cannot speak for himself. So we have to speak for a year. Say his name. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Give him a hand. The going to lead us in some chants. Mung lives, they matter here. 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 What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Justice. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Do you want it next week? No. You want it next year? No. You want it tomorrow? No. When do we want it? No. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. For who? Yes. Say his name. Yes. Say it louder. Yes. Say it prouder. Yes. What's his name? Yes. Say his name. Yes. Say his name. Yes. Say his name. Yes. If you don't get it, shut it down. If you don't get it, shut it down. turn this back over to Monique, but those are a few chants that we, we learned throughout the past, I learned throughout the past two years. And it is, it is an absolute terror and a depressing loss whenever we have to show up and repeat those things. And as I said in the beginning of my last speech, I see y'all as family. Because growing up in Minneapolis Public Schools, I sat at the same table as many people with the last name of Vang, Zhang, it, it, Lee, many, many of the last names, and we were all treated the same in the eyes of the school, the hallway deans, the principals, and the teachers. And so I see y'all as family, and what we call this is solidarity. And this is showing up for community regardless of if somebody had a knife, regardless if somebody was a quote-unquote threat. Because you know if Yi Shang was sitting in Linden Hills and he had white skin, he would have been treated very differently. 
he would have been treated very differently. If he was in an apartment in Edina, he would have been treated very differently. And you need to look around at the people around you right now. Look at the mayor that isn't here. That's Think about right. the city council people that aren't here. Where are they? Think about the DA that isn't here. Where is he? If this doesn't benefit them, they don't show up. But we show up to show compassion for the family, to show compassion for the for the community. It may not benefit you directly, but you got to help somebody. You got to serve. You got to show up. So please take note of the city council people that are not here, of the mayor that is not here. Because when we had the press conference for Marcus Golden that was shot and murdered by St. Paul police in 2015, they tried to cover that up for over half a decade. And when we had the press conference for $1.3 million that was given to his family after a civil lawsuit, where was the mayor? Where were the city council people? Nowhere to be found. Integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is looking. It's doing the right thing when the body cam is on or off. And the standard for these officers is so low that anybody can show up with a badge and a gun and start harassing elderly people. And to know that he was hard of hearing makes it even worse. It's, it's awful. And they don't show up with any compassion or any, any, any attempt to, to treat a human being like a human being. And this happens all the time. So Troy needs to levy some charges against these officers, let alone fire them. And if he doesn't do it, then Keith needs to show up and levy some charges against these officers. It is incumbent upon us to show up and, and ring the phone of, of, of Troy and let him know he needs to hold these officers accountable. They should not be getting paid by your tax dollars anymore. Why are we paying for low-level, substandard killer cops? They should not be around anymore. They should not be on the job. One of these reporters here, y'all have a boss to answer to. If you killed somebody, you would not have a job anymore. So why is it okay for a cop to do it? Say his name! Say his name! Say his name! Say his name! Thank you, two stars. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. All right, Ms. Monique. We have two more speakers here. Uh, I'm going to introduce here uh, two elected officials. Uh, again, uh, if you're an elected official, please come on to the podium as well. We want to recognize you as well because you are in a position of leadership, in a position to serve the public. And it takes a lot of courage for you to be here. But today we have two champions. So two elected officials who are here with us, who have the courage, the heart, the gut to be with us every step of the way. And there are two other organizers um, on behalf of the Pump Committee as well. So I'd like to introduce um, Senator, Minnesota Senator Susan Pa, and also uh, City Council Nancy Yang will be speaking next, okay? So give it up to Senator Susan Pa, please. This is a very sad day, but I feel so grateful that we are in community together, all of us here seeking justice for our Ye Hyung. If we want change, it starts with us, and we must unite for that change. There has to be change in the system, there has to be change in policy, there has to be change with the way that we police our community. We cannot afford for people like Ye Hyo to die at the hands of our police officers because they were not there to serve and protect, they were there to kill him. That is not okay. When we call the police for help, we're expecting that they come out and they help the people that are involved in those situations. Not that they are now the people that are in harm's way of the police. I stand in solidarity with everyone here. I'm proud of our community. I'm proud that we can come together and seek that justice. I was talking to uh, Miss Ye, uh, Miss uh, Ye uh, Hyung earlier, and she was sharing her story about now that she has to go back home alone without her husband. This is a man who has a wife, who has children, who has people who love him. He's part of this community. His life mattered. It's, he, his life is not any less than any one of us or the police officers. And we have to get them to understand that, that when they do their job, 
They should be serving and protecting the people. I thank everyone for coming and I'm proud to be a part of this community in which stands up for justice for people. Thank you. So I want to say thank you to everyone for being here. I'm the council member in the east side of St. Paul. I'm Nelsie Yang. And because of the power of our community, I won my election. I'm the first Hmong American woman and also the youngest person to be elected into the St. Paul City Council. Yeah! And, and I got involved in this work because I saw how I saw all the struggles the pain that my own family went through because we grew up poor and I saw how we were mistreated by law enforcement and it clicked to me I just remember the day when I realized this actually wasn't something that my family experienced in isolation but that so many other families across race across ethnicity class they experienced this too it really hurts to be here because I have been to so many of these candlelight vigils. I've been to so many protests out in the streets. Many of you here were part of the protests where we fought for justice for Jamar Clark and we blocked Interstate 94. And we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We are sick and tired of being here. It is not hard to ask people to be basic human beings and to treat others with dignity and respect. And it is clear that the officers, all the officers who are on the scene, none of them made the choice to have any sort of basic human dignity for Ye That's right. That's right. And I feel that there's so much I want to say, but I feel like one thing that we are not talking enough about is how there were police officers of color on the scene. We have Hmong speaking police officers on the scene. We are the people who fought to make that change happen. For us to have representation in our police department because we know how painful it is when we go out there and only see white officers. So that's why we fought to make sure that we did have multilingual people on, in the force, that we did have people of color and they did not make the choice to live up to the standard that they said they would do when they took that oath and became police officers. They did not choose to live up to the standard that we as people of color, we as working class people, people who have been hurt over and over again by the system that we wanted them to live up to. And I know that we put a lot of expectation for our communities of color but that's because we know they understand. They should be the ones to understand our hurt and pain the most. Are you with me on that? Yes. They are the ones who should understand our pain the most and they did not make that choice. And they cannot walk away free. So I wanna make sure all of you are clear about this because we did have our own brothers. We did have our own people from our communities of color there and on that scene. And this could have turned turned out differently, and it should have, and it did not. And that's why we are here fighting for justice, because we deserve better than this. And we will not stop doing this until no one, no one loses their life. No one should be dying at all in our streets, in our buildings, anywhere. And especially not by the people who are supposed to be here to serve and protect us. And so thank you all for challenging the authority. Thank you for using your voice to make change because we have always been taught that our voice doesn't matter. I know that those of you who are Mo, you know what I mean when I say that. Yeah. And you are so courageous. All of you are so courageous. And I want to ask you to spread that fire in your belly. Spread it like wildfire. And change is possible and it starts with you. So thank you for being here and taking a stand. Thank you. <laughs> And I want to introduce, um, I, I also want to take a second and say thank you to so many candidates who are here with us today. You are running for office because you believe in change 
and you are courageous and running to make that vision a reality. And so I, I want to ask you to raise your hand if you are a candidate running for office. Any here, candidates here? Yes, I know. So if you all, if you all have anything you want to share, go to them because they are the people who need to be hearing from you about the type of change that you want to see happen in your community. And these are St. Paul candidates who are running for office. So I want to introduce my really good friend and fellow colleague in the St. Paul City Council. This is Mitra Jalali, council member in St. Paul Ward 4. Hey, everyone. My name is Mitra Jalali. I did not come here planning to speak today. I came here planning to listen. And then I was asked to come and share some words and I'm more than willing to do that because if you hold an elected city office in this city with any kind of responsibility over the police department, you should be here, you should be in this space. So I wanna thank you all for holding us accountable as our community. I just wanna start by saying to the family that there's no words I could say that could take or ease your pain. And I break and I weep for your loss and we are here with you. Please receive that, we will be here for you. I am so sorry. Um, what I wanna say to add to what I've heard is that I just keep thinking how there are millions of Americans who go through their life and they never have an interaction with police. They don't ever have an interaction with police. And if they do have one, they emerge alive and their problem was solved. So something is not working. And we can talk about, sure, more culturally competent officers, sure. More officers of color, okay. But people of color officers are killing people of color in our cities, okay? Officers who share background with victims are still part of a fatal encounter. So we need to think so much bigger. It's so much bigger than that. We need to fund people's lives in every way so that they are safe, cared for, that there are multiple people around them to help them when they're having some kind of situation, and that the officer coming is maybe never called upon or is the absolute last resort, and that that encounter ends safely, okay? That's the vision I have for our community. We fell so short of that a week ago. And I don't want to be out here with you all because of what's happened, but I also will be. And I just want you to hear personally I am taking up my responsibility because if you run for office, you run to have the power and that comes with responsibility to do something. So that is my commitment and I'm here with you in grief. And the last thing I wanna say, in Minnesota, we've been to a lot of events like this. I can feel how tired people are here. And you know right away as there should be, there should be a consequence. There should be news crews, there should be outcry, there should be protesting. But I've also walked with families long after the news leaves, after the crowds disperse, and they are in their loneliness and grief. And my ask is that we don't let this be a flash in the pan to the people who no longer have their loved ones with them, that we hold this family for the long haul, like all the families here for the long haul, that we create that community of care, okay? Can we do that? So thank you. That's my last ask. Thank you for the chance to share my thoughts with you. And solidarity and love. Thank you. Turn it back over to Michelle Brooks. I just want to add that um, Communities United Against Police Brutality is known for our reinvestigations of police deaths in, you know, that, that are caused by the police. And we have investigated uh, many numbers of these, you know, these deaths. And we will be investigating this case and the reason we do it is because we want the truth to come out. And what we know is what has been in the media is not the truth. You know, we know that this is a setup to try to justify what the police have done. And so we will be investigating. So if anyone has any information, please bring it forward to myself. Uh, can, uh, Emma, where are you? Nicole, where are you? Put your hands up so people can see you. Please bring your information forward so that we can begin to develop our reinvestigation because the people themselves have to investigate these cases. What we know is that the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension comes in and they investigate these cases, but they investigate them with the idea of clearing the cops. That's their goal. In fact, a lot of us call them the Bureau of Cop Apologists for very, very good reasons. And so 
we ourselves need to do our own investigating. We ourselves need to do our own work to expose what truly happened in this case. I think the body camera footage is quite damning. Yeah. I think you agree. Yeah. But we really need to gather the information that we ourselves as a community need to put out. And I know we're planning to put together um, videos in this case to show what really, really happened. Um, just like we sued to get the, to get uh, Yu Zhang's name out, just like we sued to force them to release the names of the cops, we are now going to go into the mode of reinvestigating this case. Those reinvestigations matter, and they matter a lot because they're the things that allow people to get lawsuits. And you can see some of the families here who were able to have lawsuits, including Monique, including Taryn Bang, and uh, 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 Travis Jordan's family, and other other families that were able to get some measure of justice because of these investigations. So please, if you have information, please come forward. Please bring that information out. It doesn't help the community when you keep those things to yourself. It's so much more important for us to work collectively and to get this work done. So thank you all so much for being here. It's called out. It's, right. it's cold out here, so we're going to close out soon with one last speaker. Thank you all again for standing with this family. We have their backs, and we are their backs. Thank you for being here. Also, we have pass up some candles. Uh, it's kind of cold, so we're going to... Yeah, it's going to be hard to hide light, and it's kind of cold. So, you want to just bring it back up here, take it home, whatever, light on, stick them on the back, hot, whatever, it's fine with me. Um, so, just the last little detail. All right. Um, I just want to say um, thank you again to everybody for being here. I just want to close it off on behalf of the family, the Hmong community, that you guys have been amazing. You know, if you know, Hmong, 18, Hmong community is all about family. About you guys being here, we are all one big collective family here. And that means a lot. So today we see a lot of love, and we are grateful for that. Before we go, I just want to say a few words to Hmong. And then we're going to close our eyes in a bit here to show respect to Mr. Ye Jean. And then we will move forward with, if you have any candle, we can do that. If not, then we'll close it off. Mm. At this time, let's go ahead and close our eyes for about 5 to 10 seconds. Thank of Mr. Ye Zhang and thank of all the ones that have lost their life in the hands of a police officer. So let's do a moment of silence for about 10 seconds or so. Thank you. Watch out. Thank you. One more. Say his name. Yes, Say his name. Yes, One more time. All the way to heaven. Say his name. Yes, Thank you for being here. What should I talk Thank you, Mr. Nick. Okay, so the family's here, they have those candles lit, so we're going to be in solidarity, we're going to get ours lit too, and stay with us. Um, so, i got some lighters, we'll figure out how we'll get them done, and let's show them some support, since they've got their candles lit. And thank you.